very important national day when we celebrate the selfless sacrifices by the founding fathers of our country. At the event, President Ruto made a long list of declarations, including specifics on the Hustler Fund and how it will operate, irrigation, housing, universal health care, probe into the DCI, afforestation, among others. I think I've already planted over 300 <laughs> trees, so I may want to uh, lay claim on that pronouncement. But good as it is, it's actually made in a manner that is very discomforting. It is significant that the President said his government had reached out to his East African neighbors to start local manufacturing as a mid-term remedy. According to the President, a decision has also been taken to construct at least 100 dams through quote-unquote public-private partnerships to create the land under cultivation. These pronouncements pile on top of others like creation of fund for the judiciary and the police. Our Constitution decrees that the executive, which is headed by the president, consists of the president, the deputy president, and the rest of the cabinet. The president, as a head of state and government, exercises the executive authority of the republic with the assistance of the deputy president and the cabinet secretaries. The Constitution does all give way, leave, give leeway to the President to impose decisions on the country just because he is the President. As far as Kenyans know, Ruto has no cabinet. His nominees for cabinet secretaries are currently undergoing the mandatory, mandatory vetting by the National Assembly. Nominees for principal secret positions are equally going through the same vetting process. As believers in our Constitution 2010, the rule of law and due process, we are deeply concerned about the trajectory the regime is taking. We are constrained to ask, in the absence of a cabinet, who is making these decisions and coming up with the fundamental proposals that President Ruto is declaring? Is the outgoing cabinet making fundamental and binding decisions for the incoming cabinet? Are the members of proposed cabinet that is being vetted already making decisions before they are sworn in and are able to take the oath of office? Is President Ruto acting alone? Who is making these fundamental policy decisions? Who prepare the report leading to the ongoing purge of the DCI? Who decided that we can manufacture fertilizers jointly with a neighboring country or to build dams on a PPP basis. Ruto appears to be shifting fundamental decision-making from the government to himself, and perhaps partially to his party. We fear that these events are early insight into the intentions of Kenya Kwanzaa leadership and administration and the future direction of the regime. Ruto is slowly working to increase his personal control over the regime is steadily, is, is steadily moving away from the more collective and collegial leadership style characteristic of his predecessors. And some of us had have time to work with President Kibaki and uh, more recently President Uhuru with regard to the consultative nature of cabinet decision making. And for example, when we took the decision uh, in 2012 uh, not to lift the ban on GMO. And we are still waiting to hear. And happily, President Ruto was there for two hours listening to him. He didn't make mention to that controversial statement about genetically modified foods. We are staring at the emergence of a personalized dictatorship in which a leader decides to avoid constraints and believes he does, he does not need to consult anyone or any institution on decision making. We are seeing a leader's personal philosophies, fears, and ambitions being presented to the country as policies. It is a one-man show, simply put. From both history and experience, we know the leaders who came to power and immediately backed on chipping away at the constraints on their rule over a span of years 
and ultimately merge as highly dangerous autocrats. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, this kind of approach has very high chances of miscalculation. This personalized approach to policymaking also gives leaders, and it will definitely give President Ruto the latitude to change his mind on a whim. This is a recipe for volatile and erratic uh, policies. I want to conclude by saying this is our advice to President William Ruto, Kenya Kwanza um, team, that Kenya is watching. At this particular time, I don't know whether they know the state of insecurity on the border between Tana River County and Kitui County is as rich an alarming rate where it's like free for all. Citizens are being butchered and innocent animals like camels are also being butchered. And we don't hear anything. But worse still, at this time when Kenyans are hurting, poor school children are getting thrown out of school and there's no food at home. What they call home. So, even as they await the recommendations of the task force, and the Kenya is not short of task forces. I was once minister for education, and I had a task force for education. Came up with a report called Ticket, <laughs> because we felt we were overworking our children and people like those. What we need is to give our children quality education. What these children need to do is to be in school, not out of, not out of school. When they are, the parents have nothing to place on the table because of the high cost of living, because this regime already seems to be insensitive to the suffering of our people. Kwa hivyo, mimi na wasii tu, wa Kenya ingawaje tu kona vumilivu wa hali ya juu, tusife moyo. Asa wakati kama huu, tunatarajia mungu wa tujalie, tupate mvua ya msimu, tupande vya kulavietu, lakini tusipande vya GMO utafadhali, Wakipanda jemo bash umekwisha <laughs> now you not be able to replicate even your seeds we have to stand for what is in the best interest of us the current generation and the future generations of Kenyans we will do so fearlessly but with due regard to the rights we have under our constitution president ruto himself was on record as saying he wants to have a working official position and I think we are moving in that direction. So it should not be seen that we want to topple anything, we want to be rough about anything, but these are issues of the day that are important. As Azimio La Moja and Kenya, we are putting our house in order, absolutely in order, to be a working, relevant, official position. May God bless our country once again. Siku pata nafasi jana, ya ingawaji nilipata kia kadi na nikailekea kule, Sikupata nafasi kuambia wa Kenya wenzangu happy mashuja day. Nyinyi ni mashuja bado. Na ushuja huo ni lazima basi ulekeo upatiwe mwelekeo. Tusiwe tunasema shuja we ni shuja huyo ni shuja bila hata mambo yakienda kombo tukiaona hatuna hata nguvu za kusema hili aliwezekani ama hili alifai. Kwa hivyo Mungu abariki Kenya na Kenya wenzetu. We thought that in the absence of a cabinet the president has just to be patient. Yesterday was his first public engagement on a national day. He didn't have to <laughs> take that route where he opens himself to the kind of criticism that all of us are able to articulate today. Asanteni. Kama kuna swali? Asanteni. Thank you.